Hello, in this uh, video I'm going to summarize uh, The Motive by Patrick Lencioni. This is a great book that uh, focuses on the why behind leadership. Like what is your why? Why do you want to lead? There are lots of book I, books that I have read around uh, how to be a good leader, but this is the first around why what is the motive? What is your why behind leadership? So let's get into some of the key takeaways. The biggest one that resonated with me after reading this book was, please don't be a leader unless you are doing it for the right reason. Unless you have a good reason, the motive, the why, don't be a leader because you'll not do a great job at it. And this question, are you leading to get something from your role or are you leading to give something there's a fundamental shift here if you're leading to get something based on your current status uh, or your current level or get some monetary rewards or get some power versus are you leading to give coaching to empower your team to run great meetings to achieve a larger purpose that your company is aiming to achieve. This is a two different set of uh, motivations that uh, leaders would have. And at any given point, you might do things to get and give at the same time, but one of these two will be predominant. And there is a really good story in this book. Um, little slow, but a huge part of this book is taken by this story uh, about a CEO who is doing a terrible uh, terrible, not tearing, terrible job executing at his uh, role and just wants to enjoy being the executive. So wants to have fun at the role, but not really do all the work that the role requires. So that is a story that leads into this book. And it asks uh, each one of us as readers to, to reflect on the key activities that you and I as leaders perform and reflect whether we enjoy them and reflect whether we like them and those that we don't like and along with their importance, like which ones you like, not like, just stack rank them. And it could be something like this. It's just an example where, you know, there could be these bunch of activities and, you know, you rank them. And then you say, hey, whether you like them, enjoy them, and what is their importance, right? Once you do that, this is a great exercise. You will actually follow this book really well, right? Because it's about what is your motivation? Is it reward-centric, entitlements-driven, or the desire to serve with a larger cause? The second outline of this book that I will talk about is there are these five areas where you could be doing a terrible job, abstaining, not doing, delegating, and... Um, actually leading your team in a pretty bad way. And those are the five areas which we really need to reflect and improve, which is the first one as a leader is, are you spending enough time developing your leadership team? Are you managing your subordinates and hoping that they would manage their subordinates well as well? Are you having those difficult, uncomfortable conversations? Are you running great team meetings? And finally, are you communicating constantly at a repeated uh, regular interval so that your message is reached to the employees. So these five areas can really help us reflect if uh, we're really motivated for the right reasons and if we are the right leader for this job. And if not, we are an executive, sure, but we are not executing. There's a difference. Executive is the state of being, but an executive executing is a verb, right? Where you're acting, you're actually doing the things. And if these five areas, you're not doing a great job, or if you're abstaining, then that's a problem, right? And there's a final message inspiration. So let's get into each of them, right? So what is your motivation for leading? Is it uh, financial rewards? Then, you know, you, you, you may be right in some sense that, hey, look, I've worked at this role at this company for 10 plus years. I really... Now I'm at this uh, deserving state where I should be, you know, entitled to be leading. 
and re regardless of uh, whether I enjoy it or not, whether I do the work that is needed as a leader, right? So that could mean that you abstain from your work, abstain from difficult work, you omit doing things that are really needed that you think is mundane, but it's actually very important um, for your team to succeed. So if, if, if your predominant reason is the financial reward or the power, need for power or status that drives you, then you will quickly realize that you may not do all the right things needed. So knowing your motivation and the predominant motivation is important. And also knowing that, hey, look, real leadership is coming from this place of service. There may be times where you really want to accumulate financial uh, wealth, but at some point you'd only thrive if you come from this place of service, if you come from this place of uh, purpose that is driving you towards this larger purpose or solving big problems that the society faces, right? Um, so those are the two big key questions around motivation. And the way you get into those these questions is you analyze these five areas. The first one is uh, developing your team uh, and your leadership within the team. If you don't do a great job here, then that's a problem. Like, do you feel that you're spending time developing your team uh, and their interpersonal dynamics is superfluous or a waste of your time? If you feel it's a waste of your time, you'll not do a great job. You'll just say, delegate it to someone else. Say, hey, you're responsible to build this next second in charge for me versus you personally doing that. Do you, you know, build your team uh, by having these team building activities that are just for fun and you don't really have those activities that uh, get you to get your people and your leadership team together and improve their collective behavior to help each other out, to make them feel uncomfortable, um, not just um, to make them have those uncomfortable conversations in those team activities. Those are the real gains of those team activities and team building activities. Just having fun and enjoying alone doesn't uh, meet the purpose. So spend your time developing your team, spend your time having activities that get them closer. A concrete example could be like, let's say you're doing a promotion cycle. How would you actually develop your leaders? You could role play by having each one of them take a role of uh, a proponent and someone who's going to say, hey, good things about this person who's getting promoted and someone who's going to say bad things about this person's getting promoted. And hopefully you make your manager who is actually proposing to, to promote someone to talk about the bad things, right? And now all of a sudden you've helped them do this uncomfortable conversations and really gotten feedback. So do those team building activities uh, and spend time with your team to actually build your leadership team. If you don't do this, then you know, you're know you not really doing the right thing. You're not really executing at your job. The second one is managing your subordinates. And the way you manage your subordinates is how they would manage their subordinates. So you're setting an example. So do you provide individual guidance and coaching? Or do you feel that, hey, look, this is, you know, they are mature people, they don't need coaching. Remember, even Steph Curry needs a coach, right? So even the best of the best players need coach, best of the team members need coaching. So you need to provide them as a leader, general direction of their work, and make sure that their work and the direction of their work is understood by their peer teams. So if you don't do this, you're not really managing your subordinates. Um, or do you justify that, hey, knowing what your direct reports are doing and claiming that would be micromanaging, meaning do you just abstain? Then, then you're not really sufficiently informed that you can identify potential problems, flag it to them, uh, and they, small little things can become big. So that shouldn't, be a, that shouldn't happen as a great leader. You should be able to identify them, you should be able to coach them, and you should be able to manage your day-to-day -day in a pretty big way uh, so that small things don't become big. And then are you having difficulty in having uncomfortable conversations? Do you just ignore them? Do you, um, do you confront those issues um, that can have an impact for your team member or your subordinate and get to clarity with 
respect or charity and with a clear resolution or do you you know even not even mind rumors spreading around right like if these things are happening in your team and you're not having those difficult conversations that's a problem or do you avoid the short-term pain of like hey having this uncomfortable conversation in favor of a difficult performance conversation because at some point if your team members are not improving then you would have a performance conversation you would have a compensation conversation which is difficult because you don't give them enough money which uh, because their performance is not at par um, and worst case you now have to deal with their exit interview so and in, in that exit interview you end up venting versus you know you could have solved a lot of these by regularly having those difficult slowly uncomfortable conversations that help them improve with the feedback that you give them, with clarity that you give them, the resolution that you get to in those conversations is important because that way you are going through these short-term pains and avoiding these long-term pains of uh, performance reviews, which is bad, compensation, of you know, which is bad, uh, where you don't give them good compensation or worse yet, you have to get them out of the company you know, so having those difficult, uncomfortable conversations early is, is good. Second last thing is running great meetings. Like as a leader, if you keep complaining and if you say, hey, I hate meetings, that's a problem in itself. It's your responsibility to have effective meetings and not boring meetings. And it's your responsibility to, to make them better. Like, for example, do you ever see a doctor complaining that, hey, doing this surgery is is is, you know, they dread it, right? You don't complain as a doctor. Similarly, it's when managers say they, they see meetings as that, then there's a problem. You shouldn't be having meetings that don't add value. You should have meetings that are focused, relevant to all participants so that they are engaged and where there are decisions made of high quality. Uh, but if you allow yourself to check out as a leader, and you allow your staff members to check out as a leader during those meetings and perhaps even skip some of those meetings because there's some other important work that you need to do other than this most important meeting, there's a problem. You need to be evaluating yourself. Do you do these things? And uh, if so, what is your motivation of doing it that way, the way you do it? So running great meetings is important. And finally, communication constant communication and repeated communication of the same message do you feel that hey look it's it's uh you know employees are not listening you keep complaining and you know you you don't take every opportunity to meet with them regularly that's a problem remember every employee needs to hear the message that you want them to hear at least seven times seven times before they take you seriously before they you know don't take your message from a grain of salt, right? It's very important to communicate regularly. It's very important to use newsletters to write to your employees, uh, get in front of them on a regular cadence and have those all-hand meetings uh, where you clarify the purpose and the goal for the team. And, you know, communicating repeatedly is important. And remember, your role is a chief reminding officer. That I really liked from this book. And the final... Uh, ending message that summarizes is this book really helps one do an introspection um, as to what is their real motivation and helps us improve our attitude for leadership uh, moves us from getting to giving right getting attention getting status get us getting power getting money to everything that was self-interest to difficult activities and being comfortable eventually joyfully doing those difficult activities because it's an act of service towards a greater purpose so in a sense loved this book highly recommend uh this book it's a great book quick read about 110 pages uh, the initial story could be you know shortened you could really go through it very quickly work on these exercises and hopefully improve the why of your leadership so that you can provide the best leadership to all your employees and be the best leader that they deserve. Thanks.